I just want to pick up on one verse from this passage in Hebrews, and it's the final verse, verse 18 of chapter 2. Because he himself, speaking of Jesus, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. And this is one of the incredible things about Jesus becoming a human being. Uh, the writers of the Hebrews, one of the things he's trying to get across in this particular place is just how amazing Jesus is. So yesterday you might remember that he was saying how much higher Jesus is than the angels. This isn't just a super special heavenly being, and that's impressive. This is the God of heaven. He is so far above the angels. The angels are like little bits of dirt on the ground, and he's up there in the stars. I mean, the difference is enormous. So first of all, that's what he's saying. Jesus is so high above everything. And then the next thing he's saying here is that even though he's higher than the angels, he became lower than the angels. He lowered himself to become a, a person. So it says temporarily in verse 9, Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, he became fully human. And the explanation for that is so that he could act, he could represent us. He could act on our behalf. It's like if I want to send... Um, someone to, you know, I'm invited to a birthday party, whatever, the best person I could send to represent me would be someone who's, who's, who's very close to me, who's near to me, who's a friend of mine or a family member. And Jesus is going to represent us. So it's not just that he's a bit like us, he becomes one of us that he might represent us. And that means that he makes a way for salvation for you and I, but also one of the things that it means is he gets us. This is incredible. There's no other religion on the planet that, that can even come close to claiming that they worship a God. I mean, our God is the true God, but they worship a God that would understand human beings in the way that our God understands us. He knows what it's like to be tired. He knows what it's like to be hungry and thirsty. He knows what it is to be tempted. He, he understands the struggles. He was rejected by some of his closest friends. He was betrayed by one of them. He was abandoned by the rest of them. He knows how life can grind you down. He understands. And because of that, not just because of that, but um, one of the things that's amazing about that is he can help us with our temptations. He has been tempted also. So each of us today will face temptations, whether it's to do something, be angry or lustful or gossip or moan or whatever it might be. Uh, Jesus has been tempted to do the same thing. So turn to him today, ask him for help and, and just take comfort from the fact that he understands what it is to be tempted.